and what is two factor authentication two factor authentication uh, is widely used in current industry uh, they consider this to be safe uh, mechanism for accessing uh, for, so in two factor authentication uh, you actually provide two kinds of information one that you know and one that you have uh, one that you know can be the username and password that you provide and one that you have can be the secure uh, secure ID tokens and uh, it can be even biometrics like your past, uh, like fingerprint, uh, retina and stuff like that. So if you have two different uh, things to uh, authenticate, they feel that it is more secure. So next we will look into data security. So in cloud computing, what you have to uh, keep in mind is that you're, you're, you're storing your data in someone else's computer. So you have to be careful. Uh, so that there could be data leakage in it. So once you store your data in someone else's computer, uh, obviously they have admin control over it. So they can look into your data. Uh, but it's always based upon the agreement between uh, the customer uh, and the service provider. Uh, but Still, you should have your own mechanisms to protect your data. You should encrypt all your data when you are putting in cloud computing. And there are some limitations to that also. For, for example, if you are storing database, you cannot encrypt the whole database as such. And uh, it, become, it becomes more complex when you encrypt each and every field in a database. So uh, there, is, there is a lot of complexity involved in it. And uh, obviously you should have your own uh, auditing mechanisms. You should at least employ third party auditors who can audit uh, regularly uh, so that the data is secure and safe. And then obviously you, you should have your own uh, data backups mechanisms because you cannot always trust the third party. Um, Obviously, that could be anything. That could be even catastrophe, earthquakes, and stuff like that, which, which could uh, damage the whole data center. So you should have your own backup mechanisms. And uh, the legal issues involved in cloud is, uh, is one of the important stuff in it, because we still don't have any uh, answers to the questions. Uh, there, there could be a lot of legal issues involved in it, like Data Protection Act, confidentiality, database right, and stuff like that. Uh, so one thing you have to keep in mind in cloud computing is that uh, the service provider could be in any part of the world and the consumer can be in any part of the world and also the data centers can be in different part of the world. So uh, obviously there are uh, the legal issues involved in different countries are different. So the, no one has answered to it. So it's based on the agreement that you uh, agree with the service provider. Uh, and there is no answer for it yet. And one more thing you have to consider is like uh, the data that you are storing in that party might be uh, subject to seizure by government agencies that you may not want to. So that's uh, something that you have to take care of. And when you see the security threats uh, to cloud computing, uh, now. Now previously, uh, each and every organization had their own networks and people used to, uh, if, if, if at all people want to hack it, they have to go through the firewalls and stuff like that. But once it is cloud computing, it's on the internet and it's open to everyone. Anyone can access it. So anyone can try to attack it. So uh, obviously you are increasing uh, uh, the uh, risk of hackers. So it's, it's, it becomes a tempting, a tempting target because uh, once you hack this cloud, Obviously, you can get in the control over the other sites which uses the service. Uh, so that's an important issue. Uh, and when you consider the software as a service, uh, binaries, you actually provide the binaries to the users. And these users can be anyone. Uh, even hackers can buy the software as a service and they can try to hack. So when you provide the client software, uh, they can even change, they disassemble the uh, binary code and they can modify it and try to. So you should not always rely on client-side validations. So you should have server-side validations in it. So that's one important thing you have to consider for cloud computing. Uh, and you cannot even trust the leading service providers. They, 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 no one is complete yet. Because if you see Google, 
if you access Google uh, for initial authentication, it will use HTTPS, secure uh, site. But after that, by default, it becomes HTTP, unless you mention it to be HTTPS always. So uh, that, there are security flaws. So uh, if it is HTTP uh, and you are accessing your Gmail in, from a public uh, network, so if someone is sniffing the network, they can easily get hold of your account and your uh, valuable information in your Gmail account, stuff like that. And if you consider Zoho, Zoho is one of the leading provider for all these documents, spreadsheets, and stuff like that, online stuff. Uh, and that, there was one instance where uh, one of the users was able to get access to the documents of other users. Uh, eventually, that could be anything. The documents that he got could have even his uh, uh, bank information and stuff like that. So, uh, but Zoho says that they have reverted it within an hour and stuff like that. But still, you cannot say how many people accessed in that one hour. So, those are the risks. And obviously, so you will have all these kinds of attacks, cross-site cross scripting, cross-site request forgery and sniffing when it's uh, open to everyone. So these are the security threat involved in it. So, so concluding to it, so even the leading service providers have security threats. So you cannot uh, rely on cloud computing as such. Uh, and as, as we saw, there is high level of security and legal issues in it. And so the cloud is still evolving. Uh, so uh, you have to make your own choice uh, whether to go for cloud computing or not. So how to make your choice? It's purely based on the benefits to risk ratio. So uh, if, if a small company wants to start, like go for cloud computing, considering uh, they can reduce the IT infrastructure by investment, Initially, uh, eventually, if they don't know, uh, if, if they are not aware of the security implications in it, probably they, they would lose their whole uh, business. So first, they have to do uh, risk assessment, uh, and based on the benefits to risk ratio, they might probably uh, go for cloud computing. Uh, so last but not least, uh, do you know brute force attack? What what is brute force attack? Like. Right? Uh, uh, it's like trying out different combinations of your password to break a password or key. Uh, so any password in the world can be uh, cracked. Uh, only the timeline uh, that, that matters. Like uh, if, if it is 256 bits or uh, more than that, probably it might take millions of years to uh, check, uh, all, check all the possible combinations. Uh, but Consider the power of cloud computing. You can bring in all the computers together. So uh, if a person is able to get the computing power of the cloud, and he is able to uh, try different combinations in different computers at the same time, probably he can bring down the uh, timeline. He can even break the password in a month, or in a week, or in a day too. So finally, it's, it's going to be an issue. So that needs to be considered in future. So. That's all cloud computing is so. Any, any questions?